time to play Mario Maker. Oh, wow. I think uh, this level, Siberian Shell Summit. Uh, I think this level is really tough. I got this one. You think I should try it? Fuck it. Let's do it. Check it out. Mwah. But, oh, yeah, I love I love Fox and stream. Uh, it's kind of like I there are people like I, I host Fox and all the time. And there, there's there's all kinds of streamers who I wish I could like, I don't know. Uh, wait. OK, I think that's actually correct. OK. I wish I could do more. Oh, OK, I see. And before two hours, no checkpoint. I don't know if this level has a checkpoint. The last time I played a Fox and Shell Jump level, it took me a long time. But then again, that was also... That was, like, pretty early in Mario Maker 1. Or Mario Maker 2. Is uh, World of Warcraft uh, of interest to me? Believe it or not, I never played World of Warcraft even once. Not a single time. Oh, I mean, MMOs are just such a massive time sink. If you want to accomplish... You want to like accomplish things in an MMO. There's so much work. And I was like, oh yeah, you got to grind for this, and you got to grind out this, and you got to get a party, and you got to do this. No, I'm, I'm good. Ever play pen and paper on D&D? Uh, &D? No. I did play uh, multi-user dungeons though, MUDs. Why? Why is that happening? The worst thing about MUDs uh the worst thing about muds uh i won't do that but i will time you out the worst thing about muds are the fact that they the, the people who run them are the worst things about muds the people who run them are typically the kinds of people you would never want running anything i wouldn't i wouldn't trust those people to run my local mcdonald's let alone run and like dm a game and control how stories play out Ah, a mud. So a mud is like, imagine like a, imagine like a, imagine if video games and text-based D and D like had, um, had a baby, right? The entire, it's a video game. It all plays out on screen. Like you input things and things happen in the video game, but it's all text-based. And I used to put a lot of time into, I actually used to, when I was in college, like early college, I used to play a lot of MUDs. Play a lot. And then I realized I fucking hated pretty much everybody who ever ran one of them. Because they are just really, they're, for the most part, they are really fucking annoying people. Okay. So on one of the MUDs... Uh, that I played on it was an alpha it was an alpha like forever, but we just played on it anyway um, The like the, the devs and shit they would just make They would just make themselves stupid unrealistically powerful characters because they could just control and be like, okay Well, I'm giving my character 5,000 HP when the character that I had made That I built up from the ground would have like maybe a thousand and like, and okay, I've got this ability in the game that nobody else has, and it does this amount of damage. And then they like throw themselves in the stories as these fucking like god tier characters. So we're just like, we're all just supposed to be in awe of how fucking awesome they are at all times. I fucking, it made me so angry. And then they'd like, oh, I'm going to fight you and I'm going to beat you. And it's like, and then they like, they, they lord it over you. Why don't you just DM them? Because they, they run the whole fucking thing. They, they it's, it's a little muds are run by like a little group of friends and they all they all like the game and they all decide what happens in the game and they don't fucking care about the players for the most part. If you play on a mud, you're you're wasting your time for the most part. You made a castle in Minecraft out of obsidian in survival. That is the coolest story I have ever heard. I'm very proud of you, honey. Oh, I guess we just jump there. Okay, jump to the right. I thought I thought something was gonna fall. I mean, not every mud is a role-playing mud. Those are the ones I played on. 
but there was like role-playing elements. There's no way I can look cool talking about how I used to play a role-playing mod, by the way. <laughs> There's no way to look cool talking about that. Yeah, I used to Yeah, I used to play on a role-playing mod, says the streamer playing Kaizo Mario Maker at 9 a.m. doing shell jumps. <laughs> Sorry, ladies, I am taken. Do not send me your phone numbers. I do know this guy, though. His name's Orator. He is single. He is single and he is ready to mingle. I am gonna die. Yep. <laughs> I could see the death coming. What movie am I looking forward to releasing the most? Uh, right now, I would say I'm excited for It Part 2. Um... Well, like, stuff I'm excited for in the future. I'm excited for It Part 2. Uh, whatever Dune movie is coming out. Uh, I'm excited about that. Uh, by, it's uh, Villain Oeve is going to be doing Dune, right? I'm excited about that. Yeah, I've read It. I read It a long time ago. Um, What else am I excited about? The, the Amazon Lord of the Rings series. I'm excited about that. Hoping that's going to be good. The, oh, yeah, The Irishman. Yeah, yeah. I'd say that. I'd say I'm pretty excited about that one, too. I want to see that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's another one. Joker. I'm really excited about Joker. I am a little nervous about it, but I am excited. I think Joker, to me, is like 50-50. It could either be really good or it's going to be a complete fucking disaster. I think it's 50-50. Joker is rated R. That should help it. I actually don't. I actually don't know how to feel about Joker being rated R. Because, uh, like we talked about before, um, I don't think comic books or like comic book films need to be rated R. The Dark Knight is not rated R, uh, and The Dark Knight is probably my favorite comic book movie. So the fact that it's rated R could be good, could be bad. No. <laughs> All right, so when you're going up, you have to drift right a little bit. I don't know if there is going to be a checkpoint in this level. I think this level is just really short. Like a 30-second level. What are my thoughts on the new Breaking Bad movie? I don't know. I'm probably not going to see it just because I never finished Breaking Bad. I, I kind of know what happens at the end of Breaking Bad. Um, so I could probably watch it and not miss anything, but... I'm probably just not going to see it. If I do see the Breaking Bad movie, I'll probably see it. Uh, if I watch, go back and watch the show. See, I was right there. That was good timing. I think I was just too close to the swamp. The original Total Recall, not, not, they, they've remade, they remade it with, uh, Colin Farrell. I don't know who thought, oh, you know, we have to fill in Arnold Schwarzenegger's shoes and his, his portrayal is so good and, and Total Recall. It's such, he's, he's well acted. It's a good movie. Let's fill it with Colin Farrell. It seems really weird. Now uh, this recipe requires sugar. Uh, we don't have any sugar. Maybe let's try like Tabasco sauce. Yeah, that should be a good substitute for sugar. Why not? Well, they're trying to separate from Arnold Schwarzenegger. I don't know, man. I never saw that movie. I refuse to see that movie. I just know it's I know it's garbage. I don't need to I don't need to see it to know it's garbage. You know what the worst fucking ending for your movie is? And this applies to the original ending of Blade Runner, like the theatrical cut, where the movie ends with like Deckard and Rachel. For answering like 99% of chat, much love. I uh, think of the bits. Um, Rachel and Deckard like get in a station wagon, and it, they're suddenly, and they just drive off into the forest. And in, in the theatrical cut of Blade Runner, that makes no fucking sense at all. <laughs> uh. Oh boy, so that's double. Okay. 
Yeah, at the theatrical cut, the end, the the theatrical cut of Blade Runner, I believe, uses cut scenes from The Shining, and they're suddenly like in a station wagon, and they're like driving off into the forest, and they're like, there's some narration that's like, and they lived heavily ever after. You know how many fucking movies end like that? Just recently, I saw whatever it's called. I saw Scary Stories. Scary Stories ends like that. They get it. They get in a car and they get in a station wagon and then they drive off into the forest and it's a beautiful like happily ever after. Fuck that shit. God damn it. I fucking hate when movies end like that. Like if you introduce a complex story and complex characters and complex settings, don't be afraid to fucking end it in a complex way. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's such bullshit when fiction tries to end with like a neat little bow on it. That's one of the problems with Game of Thrones, that Game of Thrones ends with like a neat little bow on it. And and the throne is gone and, and everybody's happy and now Bran is king and then blah, blah, goodbye. It just it doesn't make any fucking sense. It makes no sense the way they like got there in Game of Thrones. If, if something is complicated, I feel like the ending should also be complicated. Spoilers, dude, nobody gives a flying fuck about Game of Thrones anymore. I wonder why that is. Probably because the ending was hot garbage. <laughs> Would be my guess. If Danny just burned everybody. Yeah, the Daenerys is now Hitler. That uh, that was a very uh, sudden change from her being a very sympathetic character to Hitler in a pretty short amount of time. <laughs> in two episodes. There's so many problems. There's... We can go we can go back and forward about all the problems with the Game of Thrones ending cuz that's like the least of them. We can go on and on all day about how the ending of Game of Thrones is complete garbage. Yeah, they 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 literally turned Daenerys into Hitler. They 100% turned Daenerys into Hitler in in a very short amount of time. You didn't catch that at the end where she's giving her impassioned speech to all of her followers on top of what's basically a podium and she's like full-on demagogue and like the giant banner is behind her and she's like waving her arms they may as well just they may as well just give her the fucking the, the fucking mustache they may as well just done it oh she got a little smudge of dirt beneath her nose they may as well have just fucking done that to be honest why not i don't think you need to be a i don't think you need a master's degree in fucking history to see that there was the, the hitler overtones there were a little much <laughs> well, there was a coffee cup in one scene and then there was a water bottle in another one. <laughs> they already have the pilot for the spinoff. What, the Game of Thrones spinoff? No fucking way. You think so? Isn't the spinoff all about the White Walkers and the others? Who fucking cares? Oh, here's all this horrible threat. Ah, never mind. Arya just shows up and kills them. It's all good. Or, okay, how about the Robert Baratheon's Rebellion spinoff? You know what the ultimate po you know what the ultimate point of the Robert Baratheon rebellion the the ultimate point of that is that Lyanna and Lyanna and Rhaegar have a child Jon Snow that's the ultimate payoff of all that you know how that you know how much that matters later on it doesn't nothing ever cap nothing ever comes of it completely irrelevant so why do we care. shit fucks what in the goddamn fucking hell is this i had no idea what i was looking at if i put mario here it kind of looks like he's getting inserted into a butt cheek <laughs> toad's going right into the butt cheeks toad's greatest adventure i don't remember that part of captain toad All right, so my so my back shot here is way the fuck off. I have to dip way lower on this back shot. How do you beat Mario Maker 1? You officially beat Mario Maker when you complete 10,000 levels. But uh it it can't be 10,000 easy levels. It has to be at least at least out of those levels, at least like 8,000 have to be super expert. Not like endless. Super expert as in like the clear rate. 
then you officially beat Mario Maker. So I haven't beat Mario Maker or 2 yet. I'm sure I will someday. Them's the rules. Do you recommend to buy the Switch solely for Mario games? Uh, I mean, if you're talking about Switch titles that I think are worth it, there are... Uh, there's uh, Mario Odyssey, Mario Maker 2, uh, and Breath of the Wild. I'm just going to go ahead and assume you probably didn't own a Wii U because, you know, nobody did. Uh, there's also a lot of games that got ported over from the Wii U that are also worth it. You love that they kind of accepted that the Wii U sucked and decided let's just port the entire Wii U library. Yeah, it's called. in other words, you say you love that Nintendo is taking advantage of the people who bought the Wii U and reselling the games for the same price. That's what you love. Yeah, I'm not going to agree with you on that one. I'm going to disagree, and I'm going to say that a lot, of the, a lot of Nintendo's ports over the Switch are cashing in on fans. I think that's kind of a, kind of a shame. Oh, you played Tropical Freeze? Tropical Freeze was on sale on the Wii U for 10 bucks by the time the Wii U was going under and was over. Well, let's resell Tropical Freeze for $60, but now we've got Funky Mode. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, full price for those games is, is absurd. Absolutely. You know what? You know what would have made me less pissed off about the Tropical Freeze uh, poured over? I wish that they had. I wish that they had packaged Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze and uh, DKC Returns from the Wii. If both of those games were in uh, one package, why not, dude? Crash Bandicoot. They gave you the in like. Okay, let's let's compare that to Sony. Naughty Dog isn't like exactly blameless, and Sony is also a greedy corporation. They're all greedy corporations. I think that the Crash Bandicoot Insane Trilogy is a way better fucking deal than what Nintendo's giving with Tropical Freeze. If you're talking about like platformers. And that's three games. And those were games also that hadn't been out for a lot, a long time. Like when were Crash 1, 2, and 3 re-released? Tropical Freeze came out like how many years before it was re-released on the Switch? All corporations are Yeah, I mean the sky is blue, water is wet. The, the point is, is that if you're going to be greedy, at least, at least give something, I don't know, at least be less shameless about it. But for some reason, Nintendo gets a fucking pass because they're, they're all grandpa Nintendo. Oh, I just love that Nintendo. Like, I mean, you saw it just five seconds ago. The guy in chat was like, I love that Nintendo did this. I love that Nintendo fucked me in the ass. It's great. I love that Nintendo's doing that. Tropical Freeze better than Crash 1, 2, or 3. I mean, that's just going to be a matter of opinion. I'm not saying that Donkey Kong is not a good game. What I'm saying is that Nintendo Nintendo greedily reselling the game at maximum price after basically adding nothing to it is a shame. And Nintendo got away with murder on that one because Tropical Freeze is a really good game. It's also especially a fuck you to people who had owned the game on the Wii U. Nintendo has this permanent... Nintendo has a permanent reservoir of goodwill and nostalgia that they will take advantage of till the end of the company's existence because they made Mario and Zelda. And and so fans will let them get away with anything. Occasionally somebody will bitch about it, but as soon as Nintendo releases a new trailer, announces a new system, says they're going to do this, everybody forgets everything. Like, yay, Zelda! Whereas companies like Sony and whatever, like they pull their own fair shit, but they get called out on it way more than Nintendo does. Are you guys excited for when they bring over the SNES? Uh, they're going to bring over the SNES library to the Switch eventually. It's going to happen eventually. Are you guys excited to pay $9 for, or at least nine, like eight or $9 for Super Mario World on your Switch? I really can't, can't wait for that. That's going to be so exciting. Yay, you can now buy games you bought before and play on your Switch on the go for the first time. Yay. Can't wait. What games am I excited for? Uh, Link, the Link's Awakening remake. At least with the Link's Awakening remake, it's like a completely new game and graphics are super updated. It hasn't been re-released in a long time. So I'd say uh, Link's Awakening remake. I've also never, I've never beaten Link's Awakening. I've barely played much of it, honestly. Uh, Link's Awakening, Death Stranding, probably, Elden Ring, although I haven't really seen anything about Elden Ring, but nobody has, but eventually Elden Ring. Uh, 
there's a lot of people who really dislike Zelda 2. I think it's just kind of like an echo chamber kind of thing. It's like a bunch of people who it's like a bunch of people who never played Zelda 2. Um and it's just they just kind of echo one another's opinions without actually having played it, I think. Same with like SMB2. Some people hate SMB2. But SMB2 is a great game. Not Lost Levels. I'm talking about SMB2. Lost Levels fucking blows. Nobody here watched Orator play Lost Levels. Neela was like miserable the, almost the entire time. <laughs> the level design is bad. The physics are bad. It's just bad. Ah, that was perfect though. That was exactly the setup you want. That's perfect. I just missed the shell jump. It's hard to see what's going on there. That's tough. It hit the muncher! How did that happen? I think it was too late anyway, but it hit the muncher. <laughs> do you guys do you guys get is that like a common thing? I've never been, I've never received a dick pic before, obviously, but is that a common thing that happens? I can't, I think that's like something, I feel like if, I don't know, when when I was in, I feel like it's like a high school, maybe like a college thing, but cell phone cameras were pretty like, first of all, when I was in high school, like only like one or two people in the entire school had a cell phone. When I was in college, our phones were pretty much all shit. And our, if you took a cell phone picture with, and, and when at least when I was in college, the cell phone pictures were like bad. So I don't know. I think I'm. I think yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm getting at. Is like I think I'm too old for dick pics. Is that how? Is that how? Is that how you guys court nowadays? So if I wanna, if I wanna, if I want to <laughs> tell my wife I love her. <laughs> Hello, darling. <laughs> the two this week. The problem is she might open it in a staff meeting. I think the thing is nowadays is that cell phones, like phones are so large nowadays. So like you're going to, I like, and back in the day, like phones were like this big and like the camera pictures were like tiny on there. No matter how big your fucking wang was, your, your dick's going to look tiny in a picture on a cell phone that size. <laughs> it's going to be like, my, your dick is like 18 pixels on that one. Doesn't, doesn't matter how big it is. You don't get the thought process behind dick pics. You know what? It, the thing about dick pics, I'll bet it worked. I'll bet the dick pic move worked exactly once. And then from there, that story spread. Where it's like, wait, I can send a dick pic and that works? And then there you go. The rest is history. One time it worked. And this back shot goes so low. I this, this is the same thing that happened. And yeah, and then it never worked ever again. And then that that whoever that one time it worked, that ruined it for everybody. I feel the exact same thing in the, in Jarmo's levels where he has these big back shots. These back shots are fun and they're cool looking, but it's really hard to like tell where to turn back and what where the height you need. I wish that these back shots had spikes so the shells landed on them. If that makes sense. Because then it would be a lot easier to deal with it. I'm just kinda guess I'm gonna be guessing on this back shot for like a half an hour. No I, know, I can only go to so many things, you know, I, this, this summer I went to a lot more than I thought I'd ever go to. I went to, went to Vegas for speed runs really this entire year, this year I went to MMC to, I went to the Vegas speed run sessions. I went to GDQ and now I'm going to MMC too. That's all within the space of less than a year. That's a lot. That's more than I thought I would ever agree to. <laughs> The screen shaking with the thwomps is disorienting there. Whenever I'm making the, it's not like these decisions are like, 
extravagances. You know, like I'm not... <laughs> they're not that bad. They're just time consuming and they take away from stream time. So it's, you know, bad for streamers to not be streaming. They're not like, I'm not like taking pleasure cruises on my yacht or something, you know, I don't know. Yachts are fucking like everything involving everything with boating. At least I, I know this from Florida. All that shit is like astronomical expensive. It's so expensive. Just owning, just owning a boat is expensive. Forget a fucking yacht. Do you not like being sponsored? I would, I would love to be sponsored. I just, I don't, uh, most of the offers I get are not good. And from people who it's like, wait, what do you, what do you even do? Energy supplements for big PP? Are, are you saying I have a small PP? That kind of shit's like, nah, you know, I think I'm gonna pass on that. I like it to be, if I ever do get sponsored, which I don't even know, what would they sponsor me for? Playing Mario Maker? I don't know. If I ever did, I would hope it'd be something I could like, at least kind of believe in or like hope for, you know? Yeah, like something not just random. Either that or something very lucrative. <laughs> <laughs> something like a product I actually do or product or, or service or something I actually like or something very lucrative or both both would be best coffee there actually is some kind of internet coffee brand that does sponsor different streams I have heard about them You gotta be fucking kidding me, man. You gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. I've been following this Blasphemous game that kind of looks exactly like my kind of game. Is that like a 2D uh, Dark Souls style game? Am I gonna shave my head? No, I don't really feel a desire to shave my head. I'm not, uh, I know my, it might look it, but I'm actually not going bald. <laughs> Maybe someday, I'm not saying I won't, but for now my hair is pretty thick. If anything, I need a haircut. I just have a clownish hairline. When it comes to like fun, well-designed levels, I usually have an infinite reservoir of patience. When it comes to like fucking annoying, stupid, poorly made levels, I have very little patience. See, like, I backshot, I'll backshot too far to the left, I won't catch a shell. I try to backshot too far to the right, and, I'll, and I, I die off the screen. That's just so aggravating. I don't like dying like that. It just feels so cheaty. Where are you going, Cannonball? I'm down here, asshole. What do you fucking want me to do? Fucking hate the shell, man. I miss the shell every goddamn time. I hate the shell. How long have we been at this? Uh, I don't know. I think it's been too long. It's this last backshot move. I keep like, I, I've died on the bullet. I don't know if I'm spawning the bullet too soon or what, but the bullet's been too high for me three times. And I don't know exactly why that's happening. Um, also, like I just missed the shell. The first shell you need down there, I just miss it over and over. So I'm not, I'm not sure like exactly what I'm doing wrong, aside from the fact that I'm just dying. See, like, and then I go, and then I drift right too far because I'm trying to catch the shell, and then I miss the first shell because I'm drifting far too far right. In the grand scheme of things to be born, being born colorblind is a joke. Uh, it's not a big deal. It doesn't like debilitate you. You can live your life. The only thing you have to deal with are people asking you, what color is this? What color is that? Which I think is pretty rude. Leave me the fuck alone. No, it was perfect. Oh, it was so perfect. Oh, it was so perfect. I think a part of what may, what I may have been doing wrong at the ending is I think I was too far away from the wall when I was doing the back shot. 
I think I think maybe because I think what was happening is is that I was spawning the bullet too soon by putting it on screen sooner I want to say because the bullet firing depends on when you put it on screen so I I, I think maybe That was definitely it. Okay. Well, at least I understand that. I was so I when I was throwing the shell, I was too far right, and it was like making the whole angle of the final jump not work for me. Okay. I was going too far right. I understand. That has happened to me like five fucking times. I'm so sick of this ending. God, just give me the fucking ending. Like five times. Sick of this fucking bullet. Good God, man. You more, more you fucking want from me. <laughs> what is the win percent? My win percent is zero. I have. I have had many lives that got to the end, and I have won 0% of times. In there. Okay, now we've won. My win percentage is now, like, what? 0.5% of attempts or something. <laughs> something crazy. God damn it. Not world record by a couple. By not much. By not much.